Hi, I'm Nancy Cushing. I spent a great deal of my adult years, uh, actually my later adolescent years, hospitalized until actually I turned 51. I don't even remember most of them because I was so ill. I um, I had many, many diagnoses. I was so sick that I would harm myself and others and not even know it. Um, that I had a dissociative disorder. I had so many diagnoses. Nobody could figure out what was wrong with me. I felt lost. I felt evil. I would cut myself up, not not for reasons like a lot of people did. That's that's what one thing that really bothered me because I got labeled a borderline because I cut myself. But I did not cut myself for the same reasons that most borderlines did. If you think about it, years ago, many, many years ago, people, witches and stuff, they put leeches on them to take out the bad blood. Had I had an abundance of leeches, I would have used them instead of cut myself because I was so sure I had evil blood in me and I just wanted to be a good girl. I didn't want to make my mother and father mad at me by doing things they did not understand why I did them. I didn't even understand why I would do things like light fires, hit people, do things I didn't even remember doing. So I thought if I cut myself bad enough and enough blood came out, the new blood would be good. And nobody understood this. So when this borderline thing got big with Marsha Linehan, for the record, I could not stand. I was forced to watch tapes of her over and over again till I knew what she was going to say. And uh, turns out, I won't say, but Anyways, I would, for the record, like to say that the reason I cut myself was to get out the bad blood, not for a release, you know, of any kind of, like, feel better. It didn't make me feel anything better. I just wanted to get rid of bad blood and have good blood come back in to my veins. It's a whole different type of thing. And then it turned and things got so bad I began to what's called dissociate. I, after years of being in the hospital, it didn't even bother me. I, I, years and years went by that I didn't even know went by. I'm talking, I went into the hospital at 17. Every time they took me to the hospital to be stitched up, they said, you're going to Medfield. I thought it was prison or something. I, I didn't know what Medfield was. And then finally, one day, after a lot of abuse, 
before I even got to the hospital, which led me to the hospital, sexual abuse, mental abuse, which I don't really care to get into, but it was very, very bad, which to this day, I cannot have a male, female relationship, have a, have a, a lover, or any, any type of lover. I can only have friends because of the way I was tortured and hurt and just, it's disgusting to me. When people start talking about their sexual escapades, whether they thought normal to me or not, it's gross. It's, it doesn't, it, even if, even if it's a, my, one of my friends talking about her boyfriend, it's not something that's in my realm of understanding. It's, it's, a, it's dirty, you know. I, I think it's dirty just to have to take a shower and look at myself. How badly, badly I was battered and torn to pieces. But I've gotten to the point where I can just tell people, you know, I don't want a boyfriend, and no, I don't want a girlfriend. I don't want anything except friends from both girls and guys. And um, right now, I mean, I've gone through so much. I could sit here and cry about it and drag it all out and tell you about how horrible every bit of it was. But I don't think that would do anybody any good. And plus, I really don't think I would feel good having my bad, bad experiences thrown all over wherever this tape goes to. But it was bad enough that it kept me in the hospital for 33 or 34 years. It's a hell of a long time. I have very, very many memorial days, days that I can lose it very easily if I'm not careful and not even know it. Next thing I know, I could be in jail. I could be in a hospital. And uh, what am I doing here? What do you mean, what are you doing here? People don't understand. I have come a long way, but it hasn't been easy. Because you know why? Because I just let it go and let it go, and let it go, because I thought I was hopeless, just like everybody else did. I gave up on me. My family gave up on me. The world gave up on me. I just kept getting more medications, more medications. And doctors would really try to say to me, Nancy, especially in the recent years. More is not better anymore. You're making yourself sicker. If you would just let us take away some of these medications, we could help you. I would not listen. I would demand more. When they wouldn't give me more, I would fight. I would force them to give me more. But for some reason, when I moved to Taunton State, and I want this to be heard about Taunton State, I got a team who I knew right from the beginning was going to give me a choice. They said to me, you're welcome to stay here forever or we'll help you get out. 
But when I first came here, I was so messed up on the 16 different psychotropic drugs I was on. They thought I had dementia. And when I heard that, I was so disgusted out of all the other things they thought I had. I listened to the doctor. I have an eating disorder. And when the doctor suggested Clozeril, I wasn't exactly ready to jump at it because most people I've seen that take Clozeril are rather large. But I am intelligent and I know that they're not large because of the pill itself.